You wanted to start calisthenics, but you don't know what to do. You begin your search online, spending hours watching, but there's just so many videos. Ooh. Why you upset like Cinderella teens? You should see the things I feel inside these denim jeans. I can't associate with y'all, this shit like ketamine. Been on one, been on two, been on everything. Bitch, I'm with my gang, with my squad, what the fuck you want? So be rolling gas, I can't hang, bitch, I'm fucking gone. I got people down from the jump, better know your bonds. I got people just tuning in, and the love is strong. So, when it comes to training calisthenics, all the information is out there, for free. You just have to look for it. But, there's just so much information out there that it can be hard to know where to start. As someone who's been training for a while, I know firsthand how confusing it can be. I remember when I started calisthenics, every day after school, I used to spend around two hours every day on my computer, watching a bunch of videos about training, programming, calisthenics, all of that for a year. It was really fun though, I actually enjoyed it, but it can be very time consuming and not everyone has time for that. And I realised that you know, people don't always know exactly where and what to look for. So I basically made this video which covers all the core concepts you need to know about calisthenics, programming and training in general. These concepts will basically lay the foundation of everything you need to know. It's going to save you a lot of time when it comes to searching up every little bit of information out there when it comes to training. So if you're new to calisthenics, this video is the perfect place to start whether you're a beginner who's new to working out or a beginner who has been working out but is new to calisthenics. So because of this, I'll cover the core concepts but I will expand into more detail in some sections of this video. Alright, how do you approach this video? I want you to treat this as a collection or library videos. The chapters are in order but feel free to skip to whatever chapter you like, flick through it like a book. Feel free to take breaks, bookmark it and save it for later because I know it can be a lot to take in. I also will expand on each topic in future videos and I'll post updates in the comment section. So hopefully by the end of this video, you know how to create your own program, you know how to continue progressing, you will understand the key training principles of working out and you can get started immediately with calisthenics. So these are roughly the chapters of this video. So in introduction to calisthenics, warming up, exercises, programming and extra tips. Timestamps are in the description and in the video timeline. These recommendations and tips that I'm going to give you are based on what I've learned from hundreds of videos I've watched and from my own experience of training calisthenics. Not everything in this video is definitive or absolute. Not everything is one size fits all. So you require to experiment and adjust it to fit you. But just in case you still don't know where to start or you can't decide on what to do, I will provide a rough guideline for every section you go through. But ultimately, to truly know what works for you, this is just do something. Just start, then adjust over time based on how you progress, what you know and what you learn. I know we're going to cover a lot in this video but please stick to the end because I have something that will really help you get started and remember all this. And I'll show you how to get it. Okay, so now let's get into the video. What is calisthenics? There are many forms of calisthenics, but for this video we're going to cover it as a form of strength training. Calisthenics, also known as bodyweight training, is the use of your own body as a resistance to achieve bodily fitness and grace of movement. This word originates from the ancient Greek words kalos meaning beauty and stenos meaning strength. Now we're going to look at the foundation exercises. At the core of your training, you should aim to master these main exercises as these build a foundation of your training. These are push-ups, dips, pull-ups and squats. Next, we're going to talk about progressing calisthenics. On a large scale, to advance calisthenics, unlike adding weight to an exercise in weight training, you instead unlock and move on to the next exercise in the skill tree. Though, this does not mean we ignore all other methods of progressive overload, which I'll cover more later in the video. You can kind of think of it like an RPG video game, where you spend experience points in a certain branch to upgrade a particular skill. Now we're going to look at the general overview of a workout. First, we have the warm-up. And then we have the working sets, which can be split into skills if you work in one, and then compound exercises, and then isolation or accessory and conditioning exercises, and then we have the cool down. When you just start out, you'll have to do isolation and accessory exercises, as the compound exercises themselves would typically be enough. I just included it here for future reference. I recommend giving yourself at least a few weeks before you start working on a skill, as you should develop a decent base first. So with my warm-ups, I usually like to split it into a general warm-up and a specific warm-up. When it comes to a general warm-up, I like to do things that raise my heart rate and overall body temperature. 
for me, I usually like to do burpees for around 10 to 15 reps. You can also do other things like skipping or short jog. Just make sure you don't actually fatigue yourself. After this, we move on to the specific warm-up. This is where we do warm-ups that focus on the muscles specific to the workout. So with my warm-ups, to slightly increase my mobility for the workout, I recommend doing dynamic warm-ups, which is basically ones that include flexibility and active movement like we have here in the leg swings. I also really want to emphasize the importance of warming up your shoulders because it is used so frequently. So I like to do warm ups that target the rotator cuff like these. One final thing is that with warming up, I recommend doing it with intent. Like if you're actually doing the work in sets. Like actually feel the muscles in your body contracting and moving back and forth. Okay, now we're going to look at exercises. This is the fun part. We're going to go through a list of exercises for pushing, pulling, legs, and your core. Alright, before we start, let's look at how I learned to do the push-up. To start off, activate your legs, glutes, and abs. Now you want your shoulders, elbows and wrists to be mostly in line with each other. Slightly tilt your head up, then I want you to just focus on dropping your shoulders forward. Make sure you let your shoulder blades move freely and you don't shrug your shoulders. Lastly, don't flare your elbows out too much to the side. You want them to mostly point backwards. So next, we have the elevated archer push-up. One thing I want to point out is that I prefer to go straight down like a regular push-up instead of leaning to one side like you see on a regular archer push-up. The reason for this is to reduce the elbow strain you might experience when doing this exercise elevated. You might feel better chest activation with this technique, but do what you prefer. For dips, you don't have to implement dips in your training in order to make great progress. 
I personally really started using this exercise consistently about a year and a half into my training, but it is an amazing exercise. If you can't do a pull up or a chin up, this is a great exercise to progress into it. When pulling, make sure you use full range of motion. This means not skipping the lower and upper portions of the rep. I see many people skip these as a habit because it is much easier to do. But they never get stronger in those ranges of motion. So make sure you at least have your chin over the bar at the top and arms straight at the bottom of the rep. Feel free to use an overhand grip or an underhand grip.
Here is the order of exercises mostly of increasing difficulty to follow as you progress. And here are also the exercises that you can do on the side if you want to get more specific. Now we're going to talk about progressive overload. Progressive overload is when the stress applied to the body is gradually increased over time. This training principle is key if you want to make progress in your training. Without progressive overload, you will not get stronger or build muscle. There are many ways to progressively overload. These are increasing reps, increasing sets, decreasing rest between sets, changing exercise progression or leverage, increasing time under tension, changing resistance band strength, and adding external load, also known as weighted calisthenics. Now let's look at each of these in more detail. For increasing reps, let's say you're doing push-ups, you can do something like add an extra rep in each session. Now for increasing sets, let's say you're doing pull-ups, you can do something like add an extra set the week after. For decreasing rest between sets, it's self-explanatory. You just reduce the rest like shown here as an example. For changing exercise progression or leverage, as an example, you can do a harder progression like going from a regular push-up to the archer push-up. Or if you're doing Australian pull-ups, you can make it harder by being less vertical as you have less mechanical advantage. You can also make exercises harder by doing one-arm variants of them, like for Australian pull-ups, bicep curls and tricep extensions. For increasing time and attention, you can increase the time it takes to complete the rep. For example, in a push-up, you can complete a rep in 5 seconds instead of 3. You can also do pause reps, where you pause at a specific point of the rep. For changing resistance band strength, for example, if you're doing pull-ups, you can make it harder by switching to a lighter band. Or if you're doing push-ups, you can make it harder by switching to a heavier band. Now finally, for adding external load, you simply add weight. You can use ankle weights, add books, or weights in your bag, or you can use a weighted belt or weighted vest. So I just listed a lot here, just stick to one or two methods of progressive overload for your exercise. Then use another one once you get stuck, like here as an example. Now that we covered progressive overload, you might ask, which exercise or level do I choose? A general recommendation for beginners is to pick an exercise you can do in a rep range of 5 to 15 reps. So pick an exercise and start anywhere from 5 to 15. Let's say you can do 7 reps. Start from there and build your way to 15 reps. Don't overthink it, just keep it simple. But you might ask, why are rep ranges significant? The amount of reps you can do is dependent on the intensity of the exercise. That is how difficult or how heavy the exercise is. These two variables affect each other. So you can expect with high intensity that you will be able to do less reps for the exercise and with the other way around, the lower the intensity, the higher number of reps you can do. The reason why rep ranges are significant is that they can emphasize different parts of your development. For example, if you pick an exercise that is hard enough so you can only do it for a low number of reps, then this develops the most strength. This is usually 1-5 to five reps. Whereas if you pick an exercise that is hard enough so you can do it for a high number of reps, then this develops the most endurance. This is usually over 15 reps. However, when it comes to training for hypertrophy, which is building muscle, nearly all rep ranges work well when it comes to that. Also, don't think of the rep ranges as strict or narrow, where you can have one thing or the other. It's not all black and white. Instead, they have more of a crossover effect like shown in this chart. But to simplify, I recommend doing your exercises in a rep range of 5 to 15. And whenever you feel comfortable, Feel free to experiment and try whatever rep range you want. Have fun! Okay, now we're going to look at the order of exercises in the workout. So these are the order of exercises to do in the workout, which I'll break down as we go. So first we have skills and technical exercises, and then we have compound exercises, and then we have isolation, accessory or conditioning exercises. Start with the exercise that has your biggest priority in gains, as you are the strongest when you are fresh, so you will reap the most gains from it. An exception are things that are very technical where you want to practice them in perfect form. The reason to do this first is that if you accumulate too much fatigue, the exercise may be impossible to do later on. Examples of this could be plyometric or explosive exercises such as the muscle up, or it can be skills that require a lot of coordination and balance such as the handstand. 
Well, you might ask, what are compound and isolation exercises? Compound exercises are exercises that involve multiple muscle groups and joints. So an example of this are push-ups, which involves the chest, shoulders and triceps. Isolation exercises involve one muscle group and the movement of a single joint. An example of this are bicep curls, which targets the biceps and only involves the movement of the elbow joint. When selecting the order of exercises, you want to do your compound exercises first, as these are the most efficient in getting more muscle and strength gains. The reason for this is that these exercises are more technical and more demanding, so you want to be fresh to give your best effort and have the best technique. Isolation exercises are used to work on their weaker points by giving specific muscle groups more work and emphasis. However, beginners usually don't need to do this as compound exercises will tend to be enough. So to bring it back, we have skills first, then compounds, then isolation exercises. So here's an example when it comes to ordering your exercises in a workout. Now you might ask, how many exercises do I do in a workout? So this is generally what I do and what I recommend in a workout. So one skill, two compound exercises maximum for each muscle group, and one isolation for each muscle group. So putting it together, here are some examples of a workout when it comes to designing it. Rest. You want to rest as much as you need so that your next set will be negatively affected by your previous set. But you don't want to rest too much so that your body is all relaxed and fresh. You want to find a middle ground but don't stress too much about it. Just play around with it and see how your body feels. If you absolutely have no idea how much to rest, start with these general recommendations. So 3 to 5 minutes for compound exercises and 1 to 3 minutes for isolation exercises. Don't overthink it and just pick something. Alright, now we're going to look at how much do you train. We're going to do this by breaking this down into how many sets per week do we do and how many sets per workout do we do. So with how many sets per week do we do, at the start I want you to experiment and find that zone where you can do just enough sets to recover. But you don't want to do so much volume so that you're still sore from your last session on your next workout. But at the same time, you don't want to do too little so that your body's not challenged enough to grow. So when it comes to sets, a rough guideline if you don't know where to start is to do approximately 8 to 14 sets per week for each muscle group. However, everyone responds differently to training, so adjust over time based on how you progress. How you execute those sets are very important in my opinion. Don't just go through the motions from point A to point B and just call it a set. Really put in the effort and execute each rep with intent and challenge yourself. And you might find that you might only need like 20 sets to grow. Think less is more. Especially when you start, then progress from there. Okay, now that you know how many sets to do per week, you want to divide those sets across the week with the number of workouts you do. So for example, let's say you're doing 12 sets per week for each movement pattern or muscle group and you're doing two workouts per week for each muscle group. That means you do six sets per workout for each muscle group or movement pattern. Play around with it and adjust it to suit you. Don't stress too much about it. Just pick a number and just play around with it. And if you're still unsure where to start, just do six sets per workout. Now, another question someone might ask is how many times do I work out per week? This can be referred to as training frequency. Training frequency is the number of workouts performed per week, or specifically how many times a muscle group is worked per week. I recommend doing 3-4 to four sessions per week when you start out, but you can adjust it to fit your schedule. Training splits. The purpose of training splits is to organize your training volume so that it is spread throughout the week. This will ensure that you won't get too fatigued that you can't train that frequently. So these common splits here will usually do the job, but feel free to modify it and suit your needs. So first we have push-pull legs 6 times per week, and then we have full body 3 times per week, and then we have an upper lower split 4 times per week, and have another version here. For beginners, I recommend doing a full body split where you train 2-3 to three times per week, or upper lower body split, we have four training sessions. Just remember that these are just examples and you can structure it depending on your own schedule. 
Everyone lives are different, so plan it so that it suits you. Recovery Make sure you have enough rest throughout the week so that your muscles can actually grow. For recovery, you should get at least 48 to 72 hours of rest for each muscle group to recover, which is like 2 days between workouts. But adjust it to how you feel, it's not absolute. The reason why recovery and sleep is important is that that is the time when your body is actually making the gains, when your body is repairing itself. When it comes to sleep, generally you need around 7 to 9 hours of sleep, but there's no single set amount for each individual, it's going to vary. Optimally, since you're training, you should sleep at least 8 hours for the best recovery. General Nutrition I'm not going to dive deep into this, but I will provide a rough guide into what you should learn about. I recommend looking into these topics. These are caloric maintenance, caloric surplus, and caloric deficit. For macronutrients, I want you to look at proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Learning these will serve you well and will really open your mindset when it comes to nutrition and food. The importance of flexibility and mobility. I really recommend doing some sort of flexibility or mobility working training. I know it can be boring, but it will save you a lot of trouble in the future. I didn't follow this advice when I started and I had some problems later down the line, like not having the mobility to progress to some exercises such as the handstand. You don't have to go crazy with it, just add like a couple of minutes or 5 minutes at the end of your session as part of your cool down and you should be fine. Or you can spread it out during the day after your workout. Like you could do stretches in your chair or you can for example stretch your chest when you walk past your door frame and yeah. You should be fine. Equipment recommendations. If you're thinking about what equipment to get, here are my recommendations. Apart from the polar bar, you don't have to get these, but they can really help. Tracking progress. I recommend recording your form with a camera. Also, have some sort of journal, like it can be a workout app, a note ticking app, a spreadsheet, or you can use pen and paper. Sometimes you might feel like you made no progress when you have. If you track and record your progress, you will realize how much those small changes add up to get you where you are, and you will appreciate your efforts. Also, don't feel discouraged about slow progress. All matters is you did improve. Just because you aren't making progress as fast as you think you should, doesn't mean you aren't making any. Alright, let's look at some skills to work towards. If you are thinking of learning some counseling skills, but you don't know where to start, here are some recommendations to work towards. So here we have the skin the cat, then we have the all sit, one arm push up, pistol squat, handstand, and the muscle up. Goals. If you're a beginner, I recommend hitting these goals. So 15 push ups and 10 pull ups. But for your ultimate long term goal, I recommend hitting 30 to 50 push ups and 15 to 20 pull ups. This sets a really strong foundation that can really speed up your progress in the long term. This was my main priority at the start of my calisthenics journey, and I can say this was the main reason why I progressed so fast. Alright, final tips. First thing I want you to remember is to maintain good form. So quality over quantity in your reps. Next thing is that you should master the base movements. So you know, the foundation exercises, push-ups, pull-ups and squats. The next thing is that you should have patience. Don't feel discouraged about slow progress and rush things. Also, don't cheat on your exercises. By cheating, you're making the exercise easier, which may reduce the stimulus required for your muscles to grow and become stronger. Lastly, don't be afraid of doing over 15 reps in a set. Building endurance can actually help you get stronger and can still build decent muscle with it. When training, I have these three rules. Train hard, support an effort. Train smart and be consistent. And finally, don't overthink it, just start now. I know this is a lot, which is why our free calisthenics program that you can get right now from this video. Link in the description and when you click on it, go here, make a copy and download it and it's yours. All you gotta do is follow the instructions, edit and fill in the blanks. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of videos planned coming soon, more guides, more tutorials, more workouts. So if you want to stay up to date, hit the subscribe button and the like button. I'll post up this in the comment section below, if I can. This video took almost 5 months to make, so thanks for watching. Train hard, train smart, and be consistent. Have fun. See ya.